<clears throat> well, it's uh, really great to be able to uh, talk a little bit about Merge. Uh, actually, uh, I just r r thought about it this morning, realized that this is actually represents the 10th year of Emerge's activity. We started in 2007. A few of you in the room were at that first meeting of Emerge. And it, I, boy, I can say we've come a really long way. The first meeting of Emerge was really quite an interesting one. There were like five tables, and each site sat around their table and didn't talk to each other. And now I think Emerge has really gelled into a really uh, great network of really great collaborators who work really well together. And you can see all of them uh, indicated here on this slide, if I can figure out which, the, yeah, there we go. Um, the, all of the sites, both uh, past, present, and sort of once you become a part of Emerge, uh, you're always part of Emerge, so it's been a, a, a great ride. The goals of Emerge have evolved over time, but right now they're really to focus on uh, sequence and assess clinically relevant genes presumed to affect gene function in about 25,000 individuals assess the phenotypic implications of those variants, then integrate those genetic variants into electronic medical records to provide clinical care, and of course, as with CSER, to also provide community resources that uh, the world of genomic medicine writ broadly can actually have an opportunity to use. One of the things that I, I think uh, we're quite proud of is the productivity of eMERGE over time. And uh, just to point one number that I really like, almost 16,000 citations of eMERGE work. So I think this represents uh, the external world's view of the value of eMERGE. So the top five, uh, some of my friends have been bugging, have been sort of asking me about what the top five were going to be. So I'll see if I got it right. Uh, I'm sure they'll tell me. Um, the first is high throughput phenotyping and a database that holds that. And I think when we began Emerge, um, I often heard from my physician friends, oh, you can't possibly use electronic health records for research purposes. The data is just not good enough. And I think uh, the sort of number one product I'd like to highlight from Emerge is the fact that I think we've actually demonstrated quite to the contrary that, in fact, electronic health records data, while noisy for sure, is actually high enough quality when the right algorithms are applied that you can actually both do discovery to uh, identify new gene association variation uh, gene associations uh, which we've we've done and then to also use them in the process of implementation and actually get back to sort of the starting point which is how do we actually use this information to improve clinical care uh, FKB is the database where we actually collect together all of those uh, algorithms and the knowledge that's uh, derived from running those algorithms. And we continue to develop tools and processes uh, for computational algorithm development uh, across the collaboration. The second uh, thing that I wanted to highlight is that we have uh, approximately 100,000 participant genomic data set. Uh, 95,000 if you want to just talk about uh, certain sets of data, but by the time you add all of the people for whom we have phenotypes and some level of genomic information, uh, we are uh, at about the 100,000 level and with the addition of the 25,000 that will come through Emerge 3, uh, this number will continue to grow. So we think this itself is an amazing resource for people to come in and use to do uh, both the discovery, uh, and especially discovery work uh, going forward. We've also developed the Emerge Record Counter, which is available publicly to anybody that wants to see what Emerge might have. So you can go into um, the link you see on the slide here and actually ask, you know, how many type 2 diabetics uh, with some other characteristic are there, for example. Uh, it's possible to get a variety of uh, uh, useful bits of information. This is also helpful, I think, uh, as an important note, to help us be able to identify things we shouldn't be able to, we can't, we are unable to do. And that's always a useful thing to know how, what not to pursue. And then Sphinx, which is the Sequence and Phenotype Integration Exchange, is a catalog of genes, drugs, and pathways that was developed as a part of uh, the uh, pharmacogenomics project, uh, which is the next big highlight that I wanted to uh, describe. This uh, resulted in a, uh, from a collaboration between the Pharmacogenomics Research Network, who had developed a terrific platform for assessing 
genetic variation in genes important for uh, drug metabolism. And Emerge was seen as a great site in which to deploy that uh, platform. Uh, we ended up recruiting and sequencing 9,000 participants, and that data set is available. There are 82 pharmacogenetic genes on the, on the panel, um, and what we've identified are both things for which there are uh, pharmacogenetic uh, guidelines for clinical activity, so the CPIC guidelines. Uh, the eMERGE sites have taken a subset of those and put them back into electronic health records and are clinically using them to fire clinical decision support uh, that can help inform uh, prescriptions as a provider wants to uh, provide a medication so that if a person is a known non-metabolizer, it gives them the information to uh, go to an alternative medication. And then uh, sites continue to collect utilization and outcomes data on this, and you can learn more about this at uh, this, this link. The fourth uh, dis uh, a, a key um, result from Emerge, I think, is the development of FIWAS. This was led by the Vanderbilt team, but it adopted widely across the network. Um, this uh, led to a variety of ways to think about, for a genetic variation, what are the phenotypes that are associated with that particular genetic variation? So uh, a, a GWAS stood on its head, if you will. Um, and it's being widely used way outside of the eMERGE network for a lot of people to look at comorbidities and to look at um, uh, a variety of features related to the genetics. I, I will just highlight one sort of really kind of fun thing that came out of this. Um, which was a paper that appeared in Science, again, uh, coming out of Vanderbilt, but with collaboration across the eMERGE network, um, where uh, we were able to identify a FIWAS uh, based on uh, the amount of uh, Neanderthal DNA that, uh, variants that an individual carried, and able to identify associations uh, with um, what the consequences of carrying a little bit of our ancestors' DNA might be for our current day healthcare system. And a uh, really interesting project. And then we've also developed methods for large scale genotype phenotype analysis and then uh, implemented them across a collaborative network. And then finally, I think, but maybe very, and I won't say most important, but I think a really important way of the future is that Emerge is really focused on integration of genomic data into electronic health, health, health records with the goal of informing clinical care. So a variety of infrastructure and tools have been put in place, things like figuring out how to put a genetic variant into an electronic health record as a computable laboratory value as opposed to the PDF reports that we're all familiar with getting from our uh, genetic providers. Uh, we have spent a lot of time thinking about how do we not only do put that in, but how do we use that to actually compute on it, so to fire clinical decision support, best practice alerts that go to providers. Also thought, have, have spent a lot of time working on, whoops, it's not the screen here, um, but a lot of time looking at uh, how do we use this as a tool to communicate? So there's a very large button using the open source uh, info button system to provide information to the people that have access to this information through electronic health records. And then finally, the clinical decision support knowledge base, which is a partnership with another one of the NHGRI genomic medicine projects, the IGNITE network. Um, and the goal there is to catalog and share uh, clinical decision support implementation uh, items uh, and think about the design features that we need to have in order to uh, move genomic medicine forward and to really begin the first steps of putting genomic medicine uh, in the forefront and really implementing it going forward. So uh, that's an overview of uh, Emerge 2.0.